Hey guys, it's me, Sahara. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my Reddit fantasy bingo TBR. So Reddit does this thing every single year where they have a bingo card and you basically read books that follow the prompts on the bingo card to get five in a row or you can try to black out the board. And I heard about this from Rachel over at Argent Rave and Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy. And I have seen a few of my friends create their own TBRs for this bingo board and I thought it looked so much fun. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. We're gonna be running through all of the prompts and it's not a definite TBR because this bingo thing goes from April of 2022 until March of 2023 and so it's a whole year's worth of reading to try to get bingo on this board and I have a lot of options. I don't want to have like a stiff TBR that I, isn't really flexible so we're just going to be running through all of the options that I have. Now there are a couple prompts that I'm a little iffy on like I only have one or two potential books to read so if you have book recommendations for for those prompts please leave them down below for me because it would help me out so much i am really struggling with some of these so yeah let's go ahead and jump right into it so we're just gonna go down the different rows so we'll start with the first row also want to mention that i'm not trying to hit hard mode on like any of these if i hit it that's great but that's not like what i'm going for because hard mode is just it's a little harder to fulfill the prompt because there's like a sub prompt that also you have to complete but you don't really like get anything for it so i just not that you get anything for doing this entire bingo but we're not doing the hard prompts if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't but the first one is to pick a book off of their like lgbtq plus list and the only one that i saw that like really really intrigued me and gripped me right away was foundry side by, by robert jackson bennett i <laughs> i thought i had read this book before I have told multiple people that I have read this book before. I've said it in live shows. I've never read this book. <laughs> I have watched so many reading vlogs and so many book reviews for Foundry Side because it was just so intriguing to me that it got to a point where I thought that I had already read the book because of how much I already knew about it, but I still haven't been like spoiled for like the bulk of the plot so i'm still excited to get to it and stop lying to people that i have read this because i i definitely have it i don't i don't know what i i don't know what i was thinking next is to read a book with weird ecology and the first one that came to mind was the fifth season by nk jemsen this is a trilogy that i have yet to read i really really want to because it's such a well-beloved fantasy i feel like it's a right of way <laughs> to read the fifth season so i'm really hoping that this is one that i get to in the next year and can use it for this prompt but because i'm filming this kind of late into april some of these books i've actually already read and one of them is the bone ships by rj barker and this actually kind of like counts for weird ecology so um, if I don't read the fifth season, I can still count this and still mark that spot. But Next is to read a book with two plus authors and can we guess which series I'm going to be reading? So the easiest thing is The Expanse because I own the entire series and I'm supposed to be reading Abaddon's Gate this month so that would knock that off as well. But I could also read Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a book that I have started. I just haven't picked it back up yet because I wasn't really getting into it. But I own the second which is this one and the third book in the Illuminae files and I've really loved the first one so I'm hoping this is one that I can use to count if not I know for sure I'll be reading the expanse at some point this year and if I didn't already say so I'm trying to black out the board go hard or go home right I say as I'm not doing the hard prompts but next is to read a historical sci-fi or fantasy and this is one that I have a lot of options for. Um, the first one that comes to mind is the one that I'm listening to on audio right now, and that's Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This one takes place in like the 1800s, so that would definitely count. But I could also pick up The Poppy War by R.F. Klong. This is a book that I've read before. I gave it three stars. I wasn't in love with it, but it's definitely a book that I want to give, to give a second chance to, and I feel like this bingo thing is the perfect opportunity to do so. I could also read Layer of Dreams by Libba Bray because this takes place in the 1920s and I loved The Diviners so I don't know what has taken me so long to pick up the second book but this is another option. And then the last option that I have is Crown's Fate by Evelyn Skye. This is the second book in the Crown's Game trilogy or duology. I don't I don't 
know how many books there are, but this is the second book. I read The Crown's Game back in 2019, I think, so I might have to reread that. I don't know. It's It's been a while, but I gave it five stars. I loved that book, and it is definitely historical, and it takes place in Russia, and it's really, really cool. So um, those are... <laughs> A lot of options so I'm really hoping this is one that I can for sure complete because if I can't that would be really sad because I'm literally listening to a book that could knock this one off right now and then the last one in this row is set in space which again I can this is upside down <laughs> which again I can use Abaddon's Gate or any of the Expanse books for this because they're all set in space and I also have to sleep in a sea of stars by Christopher Paolini I think is the author and I've heard a lot about this not particularly all good things I've heard very very mixed reviews but I've heard it's a very very well done science fiction and it's just really long and that's why I'm like kind of hesitant to pick it up because it's a giant chunky book and I don't know if I have the patience to read a chunky sci-fi Chunky fantasies are my middle name. I love them, but chunky sci-fis, I just, there's something about them that is so intimidating to me. So I don't know if this is going to be one that I pick up, but it's on this list as an option. And then I can also read Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I've, I think I've read the first two before and I, I didn't love them, but I feel like I was missing something because I was listening to it via audio. So I'm definitely going to try to physically pick up this series because I own all of them. Every single book that has been out in the series I own and so I, I just need to get to it. I need to reread this and I, I really think that I am going to enjoy it if I read it physically. It's just a matter of making the time to do that. Then we're moving on to the second row. So the first one is to read a standalone which like I said before I could count Sorcery of Thorns for this because and that's definitely a standalone but then I can also read the Library of Mount Char. I don't know who the author is but this is like a sci-fi or fantasy horror um which sounds really interesting i've heard really really good things so this is definitely on my list and those are the only two options that i have for this one but i feel like it's enough for me to actually get the prompt for this then we have anti-hero and this one is going to be really easy for me because i'm planning on reading the blade itself by joe abercrombie fairly soon so that i feel like definitely has anti-hero vibes because everyone's a morally gray character and I feel like those two go hand in hand. I've also heard that I can count The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons for this one so this might be completing the anti-hero prompt and then I also have A Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin because I don't know I feel like that would count too. Maybe not as much maybe that one's gonna be a little bit of a stretch but I know for sure I can count um, The Ruin of Kings and The Blade itself so I think I think we should be good on that one. Then we have a book club or read along, which I think they mean book clubs or read alongs happening specifically on Reddit. But I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna count YouTube book clubs and stuff. So um, I have a lot of options for this. I can obviously count the bone ships for this because I, I read it for Cassidy's book list book club and then she's also starting a new series in June for that book club so I will probably partake in that one as well so I can count that I can count my own book club I run a fantasy romance book club we're reading the plated prisoner series starting in May so next month very very soon actually in a couple weeks there are a lot of there are a lot of options. I know Becca from Becca and the Books is going to be picking a new series once they finish up the um, Robin Hobb stuff. Um, I don't know if it's going to make it right in time for March 2023, so we'll see on that. But I know for sure my book club is going to count, even if I don't end up being able to participate in Cassidy's or Becca's. I have to read my own, so I'm just I'm just going to cheat and count those. I'm sorry. It's it's whatever. It's for fun. It's fine. Then we have Cool Weapon. So this is another one that I could count um, The Ruin of Kings for, but obviously I can't, there's no repeats on this. So if I count Ruin of Kings for this one, I can't count it for the anti-hero and I would have to read the blade itself. But this is one that I think I can count. But I think I could also do The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I feel like that has a lot of cool weapons. Um, and then again, A Game of Thrones definitely has cool weapons. I feel like that is a very easy prompt for me to fulfill because a lot of fantasy books have cool unique weapons and I can I feel like I can use anything for this so I'm not too worried about this one but those are a few options that I do have in mind 
Hello, it's me from the future. I am editing this vlog literally two minutes after filming it and I just realized that I completely missed over a prompt. So um, for Rebellion and that prompt or whatever, I am going to probably be reading Illborn by Daniel T. Jackson, but honestly there are so many fantasy books that I could pick from this, so I'm not too stressed, but I'm so sorry I forgot. I just, I skipped over it. I'm sorry. Okay, now back to the video. So that was all for the second row. And then the third one moves on starting with a name in the title. And I know the hard prompt or the hard mode for this is to have the first and last name. And this is one that I for sure know I can get the hard mode for because I really, really want to read Afterlife of Holly Chase in the winter time because this is a like retelling of Scrooge and like the ghosts of Christmas past and all of that and I just feel like this is going to be such a fun time but I can also count the lies of Luck Lamora which also gives me the first and last name and if I don't get to the hard mode I could read Circe by Madeline Miller because Circe is literally the name of the character. So then we have one where the author is someone with initials in their name and so once again I can count Bone Chips by R.J. Barker, but I could also do King o Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chalker Bordy, because S.A. obviously are initials. Um, I'm trying to look at my shelves. I don't have like too, too many, but I definitely have enough to actually get to this prompt. So Then we have one that's published in 2022, and I think Hard Mode is either a debut author, and I already know which book I'm reading, and that's going to be The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. Uh, this is coming out in May and I just got approved for the arc for this so I am so excited to jump into this book like this is one of my most anticipated releases of the year and I am so excited to go have gotten approved for the arc and I can't wait to read it on my Kindle it's gonna be so so good I already know so this one completes that prompt and fulfills the hard mode which is really cool um, I don't know what other books <laughs> I want to read that were published in 2022 and then we have urban fantasy which the only one that i could really think of was jade city by fonda lee i have a couple others on this list i just don't know if i really want to read them so the first one is a discovery of witches by deborah harkis i think that's her last name i'm intrigued by this one but i just feel like i'm not going to really enjoy it i have it as an option but to be honest i, I don't think i'm going to be getting to this one um and then i also have the city we became by nk jemsen oh i can use nk jemsen for the initials author prompt cool um but i do want to read this one as well which is another urban fantasy obviously. I just, again, don't know if I'm going to like it. I really am not a huge urban fantasy reader. I don't really like cell phones and like technology and stuff in my books, but Jade City is one that I can for sure make an exception for because that just sounds fantastic and everyone seems to love it and I need to know what the hype is about. So I'll probably be picking up Jade City. And then I have one that I have no idea what book to pick up for. I have one option and I don't even know if it's like correct. So please help me in the comments. But this one is to read a book set in Africa or be inspired by like African mythology. Um, and for this, I have Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Yemi. I have no idea if this counts for this, so if it doesn't, I'm sorry. This is the only one that I could really think of, but if you have any suggestions on books that are set in Africa or are inspired by African mythology or anything like that, please, please let me know down below because your girl is so stuck. I have no idea what to pick up for this one. Then we have a non-human protagonist, and I have two options for this one. They're both sci-fi, so I obviously have the murder bot series but then i also have the humans by matt haig i read the midnight library by matt haig last year and i loved it it was so good i know it's a very polarizing book and it is very very triggering so please look up trigger warnings if you're planning to pick it up but i loved it i was one of the people who gave it five stars it, i was obsessed with that book last year and so i really want to read more of matt haig and this one just sounds so so good i've heard such good things so this is probably the one that i'm going to lean towards for this prompt but i also want to read the murderbot series so i don't know maybe i'll read both 
Okay, then I have one that's just, it's just so funny. It says wibbly wobbly timey wimey. So just basically something that warps time in some way. So I know Mel over at Melanor Reads said that she was going to try to read Recursion by Blake Crouch. So I'm just going to copy that and say I'm also going to try to read Recursion. But I was also recently told by Erin from Booked and Busy that The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington does warp time. So I'm intrigued even more by this book now and it's on my priority fantasy books list. So I know I'll be getting to it um, within the next couple months. So I'll definitely be able to read this one for this bingo card, but I didn't know that it had like a warping time feature. So um, I'm glad that she said that on sprints the other day because otherwise I would have no clue and we would be reading recursion potentially, which I, I'll probably still read recursion, but I'm, I'm glad that I have confirmation that the shadow of what was lost has some kind of warping of time. The next prompt is five short stories, which I think I'm just going to be reading Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas for this one. I don't have any other options on here just because I am doing a reread of the Throne of Glass series with my friend Rachel over at Raven Haired Reader starting in June and this one obviously we are going to be reading because it's part of the Throne of Glass series. So uh, I know I'll get to this one and this is exactly five short stories I believe. So um, that one's going to be pretty easy to complete. But then we have Mental Health which again, I'm probably going to just throw Throne of Glass in here or any of the Throne of Glass books because Say J Mass does a really, really good job of talking about mental health, especially because I feel like it really, really lacks in a lot of fantasy books. Like our characters will go through hell and back and no one will talk about the repercussions on their mental health. And I just love how she handles that and she actually discusses it. So I'll probably throw Throne of Glass in here. If not, I also read Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb this month. And honestly, any Robin Hobb book, I feel like will count for it because she puts her characters through hell. And I feel like they do they do need time to recover so this definitely talks about mental health in one way or another then we have self pub slash indie authors this one is going to be super easy for me because i love reading self-published authors and i'm trying to read more of it so i know that deadly dreams by kj sutton would count for this which is the third book in the fortuna sworn series and that is self-published i also really want to read illborn by daniel t jackson i know dragon mage i don't know who it's about but it it looks so good like the cover is stunning so i definitely want to read that I, there's a lot of fantasy romance books that i could squeeze into this because a lot of fantasy romance especially what i read is indie or self-published so i'm definitely going to be checking like my kate kindle and everything like that okay and then we've made it to the last row so the first one says award finalist but someone that didn't win and this is another one that i kind of need help with because i i don't follow awards like i just i really don't care if a book wins an award like if it sounds good to me i'll pick it up if it doesn't i won't like i i'm not really swayed by if a book has won literary recognition you know so i don't really know what to put for this i have some options i just don't know if it's even correct like i don't even know if these were finalists maybe i just made this up so i have Voice of War, Paranesi, and Black Sun. So let me know if these would actually count. And also if you have any recommendations for award finalists that I should read, let me know. And then we have a BIPOC author, which is another one that I am so happy to say is very easy for me to complete despite reading a lot of fantasy. I feel like a lot of fantasy is written by white men, which we totally love, um, but I I really feel like I have started to branch out and am more easily able to pick up BIPOC authors, which makes me so, so happy. So I have four different options for this. I could read Bone Shard Daughter. I can read Babel or Babel by RF Kuang, that her newest release coming out this year. I can read um, King of Battle and Blood. I believe Scar Scarlet St. Clair is indigenous. And I can also read A Sky Beyond the Storm by Sabatier. So those are four options. I definitely have a lot more, but those are some of the ones that I could think of right off the bat. Then we have Shapeshifter, which I, again, I'm going to plug Sorcery of Thorns because it does have shapeshifters in it. Um, I'm I'm talking about this book a lot as if I'm liking it. I'm really not enjoying this book, but I am almost done with it, so I might as well count it for something. And then another book that I won't shut up about on my channel recently is 
The Cavern by Alistair Hodge. Um, this definitely has like an interesting form of shapeshifters. So, um, and I, I read it in April, so it definitely counts and we would already knock this one off the bingo card. Then the second to last one is no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, so just can't have those in the title. For this, I have The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. I can also read Circe by Madeline Miller. And then I also have A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. I still haven't read this. I've read every single book by her except for Silver Flames. And that is mostly because I own the entire Akatar series in paperback, but the Silver Flames paperback doesn't come out until September. And I refuse to order the hardback and have a mismatching set so um yeah I, I really i really want to listen and follow along physically which is how i read the other books in her akatar series so i'm waiting until that gets released in september but i will i will probably be getting to it very very soon after so um, that will definitely count, but yeah, those are some options that I have. And then the last one is Family Matters, which is just basically like found family. And this is another one that I feel like I can use Assassin's Apprentice or just a lot of Robin Hood books for. So we'll see if I get to any that have more of a found family element than this first one did. And if not, I can always count Keeper of the Lost Cities because this entire series has... Um, a huge, huge found family trope. It is a very predominant part of this series, like the family aspects and family dynamics. So this is definitely one that I can count for that as well. So that was my very, very long fantasy bingo TBR video. If you made it this far, leave me a number emoji down below. Just pick your favorite number that's an emoji and comment it because I don't, I don't know what else to say. But yeah, this was a really, really long video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.